Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. So today I wanted to discuss NPT threads. So what I have shown here is a prototype GoPro camera that I am in the process of making. And if we flip to the back side here, you notice there is a hole. And for that hole, I need a one fourth NPT thread such that I can connect a quick connect to the hole and use compressed air to essentially be able to blow air across my GoPro lens using this air knife that I'm making such that I can film while I'm running flood coolant. So if any of the flood coolant gets on the lens of the GoPro, the compressed air will just blow it off. So that is essentially what I am trying to develop here. Unfortunately, I've broken three GoPro cases in the last few months. So I wanted to make something durable and, you know, potentially be a product down the road. So anyway, I ran into some issues figuring out how to go about generating the NPT thread. So I wanted to go over that now. So if we jump over to this piece of test stock I have here, it's just two and a half inches by two and a half inches by a half inch thick. And I have three points and all we're going to do is go the typical route of making threads. So what I would essentially do is go ahead and choose hole and then create three holes. I'm going to make these a quarter of an inch in diameter and I'm going to click OK. So typically what I would do is after I go ahead and I create the holes, I would essentially just select the holes go to create and in the drop down window just go to the threading operation fusion does a good job at choosing the thread you'd, you're probably looking for so here would be a quarter 20 however you can use the thread type drop down window here and select the standard or the thread type that you so wish to use unfortunately i struggled because i could not find the npt threads anywhere in here. So it turns out NPT threads are unique because they are tapered. So the top of the hole is small, is larger than the bottom of the hole. So that creates an angle on the walls or a taper. And we'll see a better image of that later when I open the NYC CNC spreadsheet. So anyway, it confused me and I struggled a little bit just to go ahead and figure out how to do these NPT holes. Well, it's actually simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back here and let's just go ahead and delete a series of holes and we'll go ahead and show our sketch again. So we have our points. I'm going to select hole again and it doesn't matter what size I have them, but if we come over here, to where it says tapered tap and then we come down here and we select NPT then we can go ahead and select the size that we want so I want NPT 1 4th and so if we go ahead and click OK now we can see that fusion generated the NPT threads for us and it also created the taper and made the threads to the proper length so this is what I did. I went ahead and we'll see this run on the machine here in a few minutes. So I used this as sort of a starting platform to make sure that I could get my threads perfect before I waste a bunch of time uh, ruining stock from trying to make the GoPro case. So now if we go ahead and we head over to the cam side of things, and again, this isn't meant to be a in-depth tutorial, but what we'll do is we'll walk through the tool paths that I use to create the NPT threads, and then we'll sort of go through the Saunders spreadsheet and then see them, see the tool paths being machined on the Tormach. So the first thing we have is a boring tool path. So we can't use a drilling operation because again, there is a taper to the holes. So if we were going to go straight down with a drill, the holes would, the walls of the holes would be straight and we would not have that taper. And that taper is what seals the threads, and prevents our air or water from leaking. So let's go ahead and just briefly open the boring operation I have here. 
And so all I'm using is just a 3 8 inch end mill. I'm going 7,500 RPM, 25 inches a minute. It's nice and slow. That gives me about a thou per tooth. And I guess the other main parameter here is the ramp angle is just two degrees. So that's essentially it for the boring operation. And again, we're doing that so that we can machine the taper. If we use a drill, we can't get that taper in there. And you'll notice some green streaks there. I think that's just the way that fusion renders. If I zoom in, they disappear. So we'll zoom back out. So the next thing I do is I just go ahead and I put a chamfer around the top of the holes because when the thread mill comes out as it's, you know, working that circular, that helical motion, it comes out, it'll create a burr. And I want to ensure that I don't have that burr at the top of my part. So what I'm doing here, again, not a in-depth tutorial, but I'm just running a chamfering tool path. We're going 4,000 RPM, 20 inches a minute. That's giving me 1.25 thou per tooth. And if we go to the passes tab here, I'm putting a nice fat chamfer, a nice wide chamfer of 40 thousandths. Again, just to try to make sure that I don't leave a burr here on this top face. So let's go ahead and click OK. And so the last thing we'll go over here is just the thread mill. So if we open this, so I'm going 5,000 RPM and 20 inches a minute. Now the main two parameters I want to discuss, and again, we'll open the NYCNC thread mill calculator here in a minute. But if we go to the passes tab, it's the thread pitch and the pitch diameter offset. So typically when I would use the standard way of doing threads that don't have the taper, which I showed you earlier by, you know, coming up here where it would say create if we were in the design view and then choosing thread, usually this pitch would be populated correctly by fusion. However, here, I think you need to calculate that yourself as well as the pitch diameter offset. So I'll show you how to do that. The other thing I'm doing here is multiple passes. So I'm using four step overs at 15 thousandths. And I usually go ahead and check repeat passes. And so I do that definitely if I'm using the fog buster instead of flood coolant, because what I've noticed is the chips can get caught in these threads. And then, you know, when you pull your part off and you try to thread a bolt or a screw or anything in there, it can be uh, sort of a pain to get the chips out. So just doing that repeat pass kind of does a spring pass and it helps just remove some of those chips. So that's typically why I do that. So let's go ahead and click OK. And the last thing I want to show you here in case you are, are just curious what tool I'm using to make the threads. Let me go ahead and go to my tool library. Let me go to my tour mock and I'm using a thread mill from online carbide here i call it one half 13 that's because i originally bought the thread mill to make one half 13 threads but the good thing about th the single pitch thread mills is that they can create a variety of threads so let me just go ahead and open this up so here's the part number again i use online carbide for the for thread mills just because they're usually on the cheaper side thread mills tend to be uh, very expensive you can go anywhere from the fifties of dollars into the, you know, hundreds, $200 range for a single thread mill. So I find that online carbide has some reasonable prices. So that's why I go there. The other parameter I'll just briefly mention here in case you're using another brand of end mill or another brand of thread mill is my cutting diameter is 372 thousandths. All right, so what I would like to do now is we'll go ahead and stop the Fusion 360 view. You notice for this uh, particular setup here, I decided to use my Saunders Mod Vices instead of my Kurt Vice. So you'll see that in the machining video here in a minute as well. So what I'll do now is we'll stop here and then we will transition into the NYCNC uh, thread mill calculator and we'll go over how we get the pitch diameter offset and the, the pitch itself. 
So let's go ahead and head over there now. All right, so here we are with the Saunders thread mill calculator. I have Rev9, it's free. I suggest everyone grab the latest version. And what's nice is right off the bat, we have an image or a diagram that is displaying what I was trying to describe earlier and that the NPT threads are tapered. So the whole top is larger than the whole bottom and you can see this taper or you can see the angle in which our sidewalls are at. So again, that's why you don't want to use a drill and go straight through. We need that taper. So I'm using that boring toolpath instead of a drilling toolpath. The other key aspect to the spreadsheet is you'll notice up top here is a menu and the variables in this menu are populated via the machinery's handbook. If you don't have the machinery's handbook, you can also use your friend Google and find equivalent values. So we have the height of the thread, the basic diameter at the end of the pipe and the overall length of the thread. And the, if we think back to Fusion 360, the two parameters I mentioned that were important were the pitch diameter offset and the pitch. The pitch is easy to calculate. So we know the TPI or the threads per inch of our MPT threads is 18. So one over the TPI gives us the thread pitch. So this value is simply one over 18. The pitch diameter offset takes into consideration the flat or the crest of your end mill. So it's a, a little more complicated, but again, NYCNC or the John Saunders spreadsheet here, it again, it's very useful. I was able to get my MPT threads perfect the first try. So go ahead and use this to your advantage. So anyway, we would be plugging in the pitch diameter offset and the pitch from this spreadsheet in the Fusion 360. Another thing I like to do just as a tip, so a lot of times, and even with online carbide, I they don't provide the value for the crest or the flat on the cutting edge of the thread mill. So typically what I'll do is use the estimation from the spreadsheet and then I will vary it by a thou or two and go ahead and thread a couple holes in a scrap piece of stock and just figure out or try until I'm comfortable with the flat and the pitch diameter offset producing a perfect thread through Fusion 360. So I hope that helps. We'll go ahead and transition into the Tormach machining. So I hope you enjoy that. Please like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video. All right, so here we begin our 2D boring operation. I'm using a 3 8 3 flute gorilla chimp breaker end mill, 25 inches per minute with a two degree ramp. Again, here we're just trying to generate the taper. We can't use a drill because remember, the top of the hole is larger than the bottom of the hole. So the walls at the side of the hole are at an angle or have a taper. All right, so now we're going to start transitioning into our chamfer. We're gonna be using a 3 8 Gorilla Lemur chamfer. We're going 20 inches per minute with a 40 thou chamfer width. Again, just to make sure that we don't leave a burr when we perform the threading operations, which will happen next. All right, so now we finish off with our thread milling operation. Again, I'm using a thread mill from Online Carbide. I'm going 20 inches per minute and our pitch diameter offset is right around 83 thousandths. You'll see me adjust the fog buster there just to make sure I'm getting some air and coolant into the holes to try to blow away the chips. Again, it can be a pain if the chips get stuck in the thread. That's why I use the repeat passes, those spring passes just try to clean out the chips. And so guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Again, please like and subscribe. Leave any comments or questions below. And I hope to see everyone in the next video.